Hello, today's video is the Baby Midland 77104D. Now, we've previously done the 104 UK, this is the D version. Let's just zoom in onto that panel at the back. There you have it, the 77104D. Now this has been triggered because one of the subscribers has said they've just bought one of these on eBay and they're waiting for it to be delivered. But rumour has it that these don't work as well as the 104 UK. Well our experience is that both the models are riddled with dry joints and that's because when they were assembled uh, it seems that the component leads weren't as clean as they ought to have been. So I haven't noticed any difference. So what we're going to do is going to do the test on. We're going to do the um, demonstration on tuning this, and then subsequently, when we get one of the other engineers over here, we'll do a um, field test. So just open this up. Now this is a set that I've owned from new, and uh, when my late mother was alive, uh, this was actually the one in her car. So apart from the had it, in fact, it's had a slide mount on it. There won't be any, I'm not expecting any fault on this, but I tell you what, I haven't had this switched on since about 1999, so we'll see. Okay, so we've opened it up. I've just done a standard mic for it as well. Uh, I don't know where the original mic went. The good thing is, because we had the original instruction book, and you'll probably be aware that middle instruction book certainly back then um, included circuit diagrams and layouts and all kinds of stuff so I've been able to make up a, a tuning chart we would have serviced this when it arrived new in the late 80s I think the big difference is there aren't all the transistors that there would it, uh, which were in the receiver on the previous version on the UK version and it has a single inline microchip down there which does away with those transistors. Now whether or not that means it works in theory I don't know but I've not heard that story before. There are two coils in the VCO um, thing there and they're a bit of a swine. You've got to hope they uh, don't need adjusting at any point or you're going to have uh, trouble getting that wax out. And so these sets can suffer from dry joints. So now this is about 18 years old. No, 28 years old, isn't it? Um, I say it hasn't been used for the last um, 16 years. And uh, we'll see whether any anything, anything is played up on it. Right, so I'm going to switch it on and see what happens. And there we are, it's on channel 9. OK, I'll start with the transmitter. And without looking at the circuit diagram, I can't even tell you what the uh, what the synthesizer chip is. This is one of the differences. The C512... I'll tell you what, let's, let's get that crystal unglued from there. C512101. Right. So the frequency, we'll set the frequency first, and that's going to be achieved with the trimmer capacitor just there. So we should be on, we're on channel 20, so we should be on 27 decimal 79125. So I'm going into transmit and 27.79.122. So after all these years, it doesn't need adjusting. That's certainly near enough. I say it would be that trimmer capacitor if we needed to just trim that. Now, because this has been tuned before, it's uh, going to be doing hopefully everything about right. Oh, it's doing 3.8 watts. Anyway, I'll go through these. The first. Um, 
transmission adjustment is, I'll just move that along a bit, is L210 and L210 is the one there. And that's followed by L209. Then we have L208, which has actually made a difference. There's no core in 207, I presume it's supposed to be like that. And 204 is that one there. So let's see what we've got. Yeah, that's 3.9 to 4 watts. That's uh, that's fine. So it's L210, 209, 208. We don't have a core in that one, so I don't expect it's supposed to have in 207. So that's the transmitter. Now, this has high-low power. It was a UK2781 radio. It's a little toggle switch, isn't there, at the back? Oh, it's a little... Um, slide switch on this one. So I'll just pop it into low power. It should be 0.4 of a watt because it's 10 decibels attenuation. So let's see what we've got. It's 0.45. Now that's probably drifted because I've just got a little bit more out of the transmitter than we previously had. And so we'll just set that to uh, as near to 4 watts as we can. In fact, it'll do 4.3 watts. Get that set to four. There we go. So the 10 decibel attenuator. Let's see what it's doing. Well, yeah, it's doing 500 milliwatts. So it doesn't look like the attenuator is adjustable. So RV301 is transmit power. So I'll just amend my clipboard to TX power instead of low power. Now it's got these fairy lights and at the full 4 watt output which should be lighting all 4 which it is doing but I just want to make sure with preset RV103 which is the one to the right of the one we've just been doing there we go so we just Adjust that so it's just on the four. So now when I flick it to low power, it only lights one. Back to full power, it lights four. So that's set up right. That just leaves the deviation. Deviation on this radio is RV301. RV301 is the one there. So just get our little oscillator that I hold up to the microphone. Helps if I switch the oscilloscope on. And we're getting 2.5. Now, I think that's going to be just over the top. So I'm just going to just back that off to 2.2. Like that. I'll just do the quick whistle test to make sure it doesn't go beyond 2.5. Wallow. Yep, that's fine. They don't all set up as easily as that. So there you have it. That's the transmit end of the Midland 77104D from around 1985.